Good morning guys. The kids have gone to school. I'm about to go for my jog and it's getting ready and I realised, do you know what would be really good? A follow up. It's been two years since I had cool sculpting done. A lot of you still ask me questions about it. Quite a lot of you have noticed that I have lost weight or more weight over the course of about a year or so and that you guys asked me about cool sculpting and just for the sake of transparency and because I have worked with cool sculpting before firstly this is not sponsored but I have worked on sponsored posts before like I got my treatment done for free and I was like it was a sponsored set of content with them I thought I would do a follow-up and just kind of give you my sort of honest update it's been honest all along like I've never claimed that it can do things that it can't but I thought it might be cool to show you guys where I'm at two years down the line. It's been two years, you guys. Ah! Actually, it feels like longer than two years. If you think about coronavirus eating up time, it feels like it's been longer. I don't know, maybe it's just been my own emotional journey that it just feels longer. And we'll go on to emotions in a second. I'm gonna talk about lots of different things. Try and make it as quick as possible because I do have to go and then get lunch ready and then get dinner ready. So there's a lot of things to do today, but I feel like I need to do this right now. Pool sculpting is its own thing, okay? It's a type of fat freezing, but there are many types of fat freezing available on the market at the moment. Some of them do not work. Some of them are scams. Some of them, you know, like with any sort of branded thing that works, you'll always get copycat things that aren't quite as efficient, that might not have been tested properly, that might not be, you know, FDA cleared or whatever it is, might not have had the full proper checks and they therefore might not be effective and may even be unsafe. So always due diligence, ladies, no matter what you're doing, any medical or non-medical procedure, Always, always do your research. Like that's up to you guys to do that, okay? I know most of you who watch me are over 20, 25 years old. So I know you're more than capable of going and doing your research. Always please do that. It's not worth it if things go wrong, okay? You know, yeah, you can like sue a dodgy place, but at the end of the day, if the damage done to you is permanent, like it's not worth it, is it? But in a nutshell, cool sculpting is where they apply freezing pads, so very, very low temperatures onto your body in order to freeze fat cells. Very low temperatures kill off those fat cells. And so what you're essentially doing is reducing the number of fat cells in your body or in that particular area. I did my ab area and the reason I did it is because after having kids, I did lose a lot of weight. I think breastfeeding helped with that, by the way. I know it doesn't help with all women. For me, I really do believe breastfeeding helped me to lose weight. I used to drink a lot of water as well and therefore I made a lot of milk. I think that helped too. That's a different video in and of itself, like breastfeeding and stuff like that. But I, I do actually think for me, it helped me physically. So I did lose weight, not very quickly. I mean, it did take me quite a while to lose it, but I did lose it eventually. However, the tummy pooch, I could not shift. Okay, that was my main area of concern. So we did cool sculpting all across my tummy and also my love handles actually. That I found very, very, very difficult to shift. And I was carrying a lot here, a lot of trauma. So that's something else I'm gonna come on to in a second as well, like how we carry our emotional weight. And, and there is scientific backing to this as well. Okay, it all kind of makes sense, so bear with me. So we applied the fat pads, the fat pads, we applied the freezing pads onto my fat pads. <laughs> and after that session, I found that in my follow-up, we did find a reduction of the fat across the stomach. Now, in terms of how much weight, as in on a scale, I have lost, I have no idea. I don't keep weight scales in the house. I just don't find them a very healthy thing. Uh, and also they can be deceptive because around that time, just prior to getting cool sculpting, I had a personal trainer as well. So you have to remember that I was having the little tummy pooch despite having also personal training, okay? Because you can't expect, for most people, especially if you're a woman over 30, you can't just expect the fat to go if you don't exercise and eat right. It's just not gonna happen. <laughs> for most of us, all right? So I was having training at the time. And in fact, what I found was that I was 
weight wise I would have been gaining weight because my trainer had scales and obviously I would weigh myself when we would have our checkups and we found that I was gaining weight because I was gaining muscle and muscle is heavier than fat and therefore because I was increasing my muscle mass through doing a lot of resistance training and building muscle on my body we found that the weight was going up. When you stop working out that muscle then atrophies and then you basically overall you get a slimmer shape. That's why I did it. I know that's not why everyone does it. And some people want to keep the muscle and that's great too. But essentially for my arm fat, that's how I found, that was the only effective way I found to get rid of the arm um, fat or to reduce it at least. Okay. So I'm going to be better. I have realistic expectations. I don't think my body's perfect. It's perfect for me. Like I'm happy with it. You know, um, it might not like fit the, the standard society's expectations but it's, it's about you and you know at the end of the day it's taken me a long time to get here in my teens especially like that's a different video so I really did struggle with body image and body dysmorphia but finally I've got to a place where I can appreciate my body and what it does for me you know I'm thankful to my body I thank it every si literally every single day for still being here for still going strong for being at its best so positive self-talk I think also really really helps I know I'm a little bit all over the place. I literally, I don't know, I haven't planned anything. I was just <laughs> thought, I'm going to hop on here and talk about cool sculptings. I'm probably talking about lots of different things, but hopefully you're picking out things that are answering your questions about cool sculpting. So the reason I'm touching on my arms and any other parts of my body, like obviously I've lost weight on my thighs and things like that, is because, and my face as well, is because cool sculpting will only target the area where the pads are applied so it only targeted here and it definitely definitely did help so there's a clip in that video or in I think on my consultation day where I'm literally I'm standing here just like this I'm doing like a mirror shot and you can see like my stomach is sticking out a lot more so all of that is now gone I don't think that it was the cool sculpting that has given me this result alone I do think that it helped because obviously, you know, when I did my follow-up, you could see that I had lost weight. And I was at the same time active. I was at the same time, I eat like pretty healthily anyway. Like I'm not a super health nut. It's not like I don't eat sugars and carbs and stuff. Um, but I'm just, you know, after all these years, I've just found that I, I am so much more in touch with my body. I'm so much more attuned to my needs. Sorry, excuse my sink. You see those lines in there? I need to get a better sink. We're, we're going to change my sink soon. They just don't go. No matter how much I scrub them, it just doesn't go. I can oil it and then it goes for a while and then it just comes back really quickly. But anyway, that's that's bothering me now. Let's, let's stay up here. Okay. <laughs> so I know how much to eat and I follow my body's cravings. So now I eat very little meat. This has got nothing to do with losing weight whatsoever. The no meat thing, the vegan thing, is has got nothing to do with weight loss. Um, that's a different topic as well, <laughs> but to try and keep this video at least a little bit streamlined, uh, I'm just going to touch on it just for a second. You know, I follow my cravings. When you, the aim needs to be to create a healthier mindset. Okay, if you have a healthier mindset, that will translate into your physical figure as well. So because I now want to have a more intimate, more loving relationship with my own body, I follow my body's cues in a much healthier and a much more compassionate way so when I was for example reducing the amount of meat that I was eating and now I rarely eat it I would still follow my body's cravings so I wasn't eating any and then when I would get a craving for like chicken I would go and buy and eat that that you know organic free-range chicken <laughs> so I was still listening to my body when my body was pulling me towards something I would follow it I had learned to develop a kind of a trust with it do you know what I mean but it took a lot of hand-holding to get there. So I did have a personal trainer. I did. I studied nutrition. So I went back to some of my old uni books, you know, and, and I, I it, it was a very gradual. Do not rush yourself. Okay. Just really go easy on yourself because the end result is going to be so worth it. And it's going to be long standing. These crash diets, these fad diets, these, you know, one week plans and, and you know, these ridiculous, what they called laxative pills and stuff, you know, these weight loss pills and stuff. Just don't even go there. Don't bother, guys, because they will give you temporary results, but they're not going to be good for you long term and they will not sustain. You will not be able to sustain the weight that you are hoping to achieve. Now about the other thing I briefly touched upon, and I know like some of you will be like, 
what the hell this is like woo woo weirdo kind of stuff hippy dippy stuff <laughs> when I talked about trauma being held in the body because some people don't really like believe in it if you don't if you don't believe in something not only will your actions reflect that but the biology of your body will adapt to reflect that mentality so if, for example if you're not convinced about something but you do it you're not going to see the results because you've already told your body and your cells that your body's not going to respond to it therefore your body won't respond to it that is like i cannot tell you how true that is okay what you tell your body your body will do if you wake up in the morning and you look in the mirror and you say i'm fat you know i'm old i'm getting weak my body's not what it used to be blah 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 your body will say okay cool i'll reflect that and that is what will happen to your body whereas if you do the opposite your body will respond i guarantee that to you there are some people like i look back at some of my stuff from when i was like 18 20 years old i was carrying so much and i was just made to feel like i was old this is a different topic as well in and of itself like from 18 20 years old you're getting old get married you won't be able to have kids Right? It's a very, very common cultural thing. And you see a lot of girls start to literally reflect that. Like I see 25-year-olds who look older than I do, you know, and they're stuck in that place where they're constantly, there's this reinforcement of the messaging of you're old, you're old. From that bloody like 20, 25, even 30 years old, right? You're in the prime of your youth and you have to wonder why those systems are in place to make you feel that way. When the reality is that things get better for you in your 20s, in your 30s, in your 40s, you reach your sexual prime at that age and yet you're made to feel like you're kind of withering away. False, true, BS, lies. Throw it out, ladies, okay? So start in here, okay? Start talking to your body in a more compassionate way. I, I mean it, you guys. If you feel ridiculous doing it, do it by yourself. Come, shut your bathroom door, right? Don't want anyone to hear. Only Mickey's here, only Mickey's. My cat's gonna hit me, but if you don't want him to hit, like shut the door, privacy, and then talk to yourself. Say, I love you, you're perfect. Thank you for serving me. Thank you for still being here. Thank you for having vitality in you. You know, like, just say all the wonderful things. Stop waiting for other people to say it to you. Say it to yourself. I promise you, it works. It works, all right? It just does. I'm not saying it will work by itself, but all of these things, it's a holistic approach, okay? It's not just about exercise. It's not just about eating right. It's about what you tell yourself. It's about what's happening in here. So back to the thing about trauma. Trauma is known to be carried in the body, especially for us ladies, we can carry it here, especially if we've been silenced, if we have been abused, especially like across the face or in the upper part of the body and we feel like we have, we've got something stuck here, we can't speak our truth, all of that can get carried here. So first of all, we carry stuff here. We carry stuff here. Okay, so in the stomach area. We carry stuff on our hips, especially if you have like a lot of hip pain. Yoga can really help with that. You know, just sort of stretching out your muscles and opening up your body can really help with that. But especially across here, I notice that the more I let stuff go emotionally, uh, this is prior to getting therapy actually. Therapy obviously unlocks and helps with a lot too. But um, yeah, this is... Again, this is a different video. I don't want to go into a lot of detail, but as you let go of the trauma from your past and as you connect with yourself on a more spiritual level that also acknowledges your physical body and what it has been through and how it has been so resilient through it all. And, you know, like you, you get in touch with that power, that internal power that you have you'll find your body will start to reflect that. The scientific basis for this, just because I like to look for the science, I know not everything can be explained. I do believe that there is mystery in this world. Um, and I do believe that there are unseen things happening as well and energies that you simply can't see or measure but only feel and instinctively know. I do believe in all of that. But sometimes I do like to also, just because of my science background, I can't help but get curious about it. It gets me excited. The scientific basis of that is the hormone cortisol, which is a stress hormone. If you're in a constant state of stress, in a state of fight, and fight or flight, if you are constantly in a state where your nervous system is not regulated and you're in a panic state, and you can be, anyone can be in that state. You might have a work colleague, you know, sitting in the office who's in, in that state. They don't necessarily, you don't necessarily have to be like shaking and like, 
you know, pupils dilated and, and looking nervously all over the place. You can be in a state of anxiety on a day-to-day -day basis, just doing your day-to-day -day routine. The more you carry that, that stress hormone will be pumping through your body and that stress hormone prevents fat from being burned. It literally causes your body to hold onto the fat. And the reason for that is because if you are in a state of stress and usually sort of in previous many, many generations, our ancestors back in the day, the cause for their stress wouldn't be, you know, oh, Instagram's down. <laughs> <laughs> it's not working. Uh, they're, 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 the cause for their stress would be a lot more tangible. It'd be like, we don't have food, we're gonna die. Um, and so what the body would do is, in that state of stress, it would need to hold on to that fat, hold on to those energy reserves for survival, right? And so we, our bodies still do that. They're still wired to do that. And so if you're in a state of stress, you are not gonna burn fat. You could actually be working out five times a week. But if you have got, high levels of stress that you're carrying. That's why a lot of people, you know, complain and say, how come I'm not seeing results? How come I'm eating right and, you know, or even I'm dieting, which can cause a different kind of stress on the body and ironically cause you to either gain more weight afterwards when you stop dieting or to hold on to the fat. But, you know, people can say they're, they're eating less and you know, exercising and stuff. How come the weight's still not going? You could just be really super stressed. So yeah, I think that becoming, this is why I always talk about empowerment through self-knowledge. Knowing yourself better will help you to connect not only with your own body, but with the people around you and everything that you find dear in this world, whether that is a spiritual connection, whether that is God, whether that is with your, you know, your loved ones, your spouse, your, the close relationships that you have, whatever it is, nature, wh wherever you find your peace, when you know yourself better, you can connect with it in a way more authentic, real and healthy way you will flourish in every single way. So um, that wasn't really just about cool sculpting, but I did answer that question in there. Yes, it helps, but it won't help by itself. Since then I have continued to work out a lot. I mean, at the end of the day, I have nothing, I don't have a clone I'm in it to compare with. So I don't know what would have happened had I not had cool sculpting, but I do think it helped. Is it worth it? Yes. If I could go back and do it, if I had to pay for it to do it, yes, I think it's worth it for me because I knew that I would still be committed to doing everything else that will enhance the results. That's it. I think that's what it did. It enhanced my results. Um, again, there's no way to know because I, I don't know had I not done it then and I had continued to on my workout plan, would I have ended up with these results? No idea. Um, but I would recommend it. It isn't for everyone though. So like I said, do your research. Don't just take my word for it. Um, it I don't think it will work for everyone. If you have a look at the reviews, uh, they can't, you know, there are people who haven't had results for whatever reason. It could be, you know, like for example, a lot of women hold on to weight if they have PCOS. Like I have no idea how that would work if you have PCOS. Um, I have no idea how that would work if you don't eat right and work out right. So I hope that helps guys. I'm gonna go now, I'm gonna go for my jog. By the way guys, a lot of you ask me about these on my Instagram, so I thought I would just show you on here for those of you who are following from there. These are basically knee pads to help reduce the strain of the running or the jogging. If you love doing jogging, or running, long distance, short distance, whatever. These can be absolute lifesavers for your knees. It really does reduce the strain. And I used to get aches and pains in my knees before I got these. Um, and these have just made all the difference. Make sure you get them for both your knees as well, because that makes a difference. Anywho, I've got to go. Boom. I thought I'd try this face mask on before I hop in the shower. I've had it for a while actually, I've been meaning to try it. And it's just been sitting here on my counter so I finally opened it. And um, it's by Dr. David Jack. And he does three different colored face masks. This is the red one. I think he does a yellow and a blue one. The red one has the active ingredients of retinol, lactic acid and salicylic acid. And it's like, it's literally, red <laughs> but 
it's definitely, definitely got some strong ingredients in there because I can feel the tingling. I'm recording my results for either a reel or a TikTok or both. Postman just came, so I'm opening up a box of goodies from Molten Brown, who are brilliant. They're such an iconic brand. Yes, Mickey? This is their hair mist. How cool is that, right? Lovely scent for your hair. And then there's a, another scent here and bath and shower gel. Where are you, Mickey? Why do I hear her? Have you managed to lock yourself in the room? Yep. There she goes. Sorry about that. <laughs> So Umayma's peeling off. My sister-in-law Naz sent this to us. Well, she arranged it from Saudi. It was like a big delivery that she did of this and ignore the random green chili. We actually had the whole thing in our bedroom. This was filled with chocolates and we kept it there so that the kids couldn't get their little paws on here. And so Umayma's begun to like repurpose it. She's, pe she's peeled off the 15th. It said happy 15th anniversary and she's peeled off the 15th and she's making her way through the rest of it because she wants to reuse it for someone else's birthday. So she was like, she's going to peel off Osama. And I was like, okay, if you've got the time, go for it. She said, yeah, you can just stick on happy birthday for someone and then fill it with chocolates and reuse it. So this is her little project that she's doing here. <laughs> Where did you go, Mickey? What's up? Starting to sting, you know, you guys. I've got about three minutes to go before I can wash it off. You see this blemish coming through here? This is really gonna be the one that we're testing. I think I had a few small ones here. I mean, the culprit really is dairy. Okay, I have to admit, I was having a bit of custard. There are dairy-free custards available. I just happened to not have one to hand and uh, I caved and I had regular custard. Custard is just so delicious. So is cream. So about all the dairy things. <laughs> Someone told me the other day that Morrison's has the best dairy-free selection of cheese. I haven't tried it yet. I've actually never been to Morrison's. Let's do a first trip to Morrison's sometime. I'll vlog it. If you have tried Morrison's dairy-free stuff, let me know. I'm always up for trying out all sorts of dairy-free stuff because you just never know where you're going to find that gem. I used to have Oatly and Alpro and they're fine. They're fine. Nothing wrong with them. Delicious. But... I then made a surprise discovery at Asda. Asda's dairy-free milk was absolutely amazing. I don't know if somebody had recommended it to me or if I'd read it somewhere. I tried it and it was amazing and then they changed their formula and now I like the Tesco's oat milk, the own brand one. So the thing with dairy-free stuff is you really have to experiment. Like, actually, I also tried random, where is it? In the other fridge. I also tried, here it is, Tesco's Dairy Free Chocolate Sundae. Had some of it yesterday, I'm saving the rest for today. It's delicious! How can I put this? So, you know how oftentimes, if you're dairy free, you'll know this, things in the way of desserts and stuff that looks delicious is a massive letdown. Like, it just looks so good and then you eat it and you're like, okay, this is definitely dairy-free. This doesn't taste either authentic or good. <laughs> A lot of cheeses, unfortunately, are like that. Dairy-free cheese tends to be like that. But anywho, this, it's amazing. It's so good. I bought it on a whim. It's just one of those things with dairy-free. You just have to give it a go because you might find the most random things taste amazing. And you might find the things that are like the best branded and look really good and they're really expensive so you think yes they would have formulated this to be just like cheese and you eat it and it's like just really sticky and tastes like plastic are you wanting to go outside a bit earlier than usual my friend off you go oh my plants are dying guys tis the time of year now beautiful purple one has shed all of her flowers and everything else is just, it was pouring, absolutely pouring this morning and yesterday. On the plus side, this one's going quite strong, which is good. 
managed to keep him alive. Really good. But yeah, the weather's definitely changing. There's all sorts going around at the moment. I know it looks like it's really sunny. It's a really great, actually I shouldn't be in the sun with this mask on because it's got retinol in it. But yeah, it looks like the weather's becoming warm again, but it was like rainy, it's gone suddenly cold. We switched the heating on again which means there is definitely a shift and every time there's a shift like this Hubsy says it, he's like every time the weather changes like this everybody gets poorly so like there's loads of lateral flow tests happening everybody thinking they've got corona because some kind of weird bug going on it's giving people headaches sickness and i think it's actually like a lot of cold symptoms as well but obviously people we all have to do the test just to be on the safe side but anywho it's time for me to go wash this mask off it's definitely tingling a lot hello, hello. Did, you thought, did you think it was a locked door run person again the little so and so it is i Eve. welcome welcome it's my sister storing luggage here before she leaves for all this luggage can't get me why because <laughs> i look like a state <laughs> so oh do I no, I'm, I'm in a state too okay come here let me just give you a hug then down here, From here. my sister's going tomorrow i cry i cry so much i found your bubbles oh where were they in my bag you took them in my bag oh my God. i lost I my bubbles i was preparing to buy new bubbles hello guys so it is exactly 4 52 pm i've just bought the kids to the dresser and i am hoping to make it back quickly so that i can pick up my brother-in-law hubsy is helping him to i think attach their telly to the wall or something they're doing some diy thing in the house so i'm gonna go and pick him up and sort out just finish sorting out dinner i'm having everybody around for dinner tonight because amima's going back to saudi tomorrow she's leaving early morning and i just thought it'd be really nice to have everyone around so my sisters are there may's going to be meeting me at my house as well actually i'm supposed to be calling her back right now and yeah we'll hopefully have a nice meal together it's gonna i know that it's gonna be super super sad tonight like i think everyone's gonna say their goodbyes tonight because it is such an early flight for them they'll be leaving early morning so um let's do it kind of dreading it but i know it's not gonna be long before we see her again i feel really really cold i haven't been poorly in such a long time so the moment i'm feeling this sort of tickly feeling in my throat I have just made arrangements. I've got my vitamin C powder out at home. I'm going to go home and make myself a little drink of vitamin C. And then I am going to have a cup of tea and I'm going to keep my feet warm. I've got my hat on. I've got a jumper on. Like it's getting, the weather's so weird. It's like the sun's out, but it's a bit chilly as well. And I don't know if I'm feeling cold because I'm coming down with something or because it is a bit chilly, but it's like I'm dressed like it's winter and just driving with the window open because otherwise I feel too hot. So, um, yeah, hopefully it's nothing because I can't remember the last time that I was poorly. Like literally, I think it's been a really, yeah, it's been a really, really long time. I'm gonna stay positive and tell my body that it can fight whatever bug this is just because there is so much stuff going around. I don't know if I've kind of done it to myself psychologically because a lot of people keep telling me they're poorly and I keep, I keep um, reinforcing the same idea of, well, there's bugs going around, you're bound to catch something. So I don't know if I've said it so much that I've now managed to catch something. Hopefully not though. Okay, let's go home. Who remembers this song? So I've recommended this a million times. <laughs> let's make it a million and one. It's from Holland and Barrett. Powder is very much a different thing altogether to the pills and the supplements that contain vitamin C powder. This is just pure vitamin C powder. Hello, Mickey. You can mix it with juice if you like, if you can't handle the sour taste. I'm used to it now and I just feel like I just want the good stuff, so I take it in. I mean, of course, also, if you add more water and dilute it more, then it's not gonna be as strong, but I just like to take it as a nice, strong shot, get it over and done with, it works. So this should do the job, give me a nice boost. And whatever cold-ish symptoms I'm getting, 
tickly throat, it should be better. I'm getting a tickly throat. I think I caught your cold, little one. Uh -huh. Little munchkin, I think I caught your cold. And this is my reaction to drinking said sour vitamin C. Done. See? Taking a little shot and the torture is over a lot quicker. You look hot. No, I don't. Are you kidding me? I need a haircut, I need a trim. No, you I don't, babe. I, I love a stubble on you. Absolutely you do, I it. don't. Yeah, you yeah, but I'm your wife. What I want matters. No, I but love it's, a it's about self-care. Are you the one that says self care? But important. self care for you, like a bit of your hair's done, you had a shower, yeah. it's a bit of stubble regrowth, looks nice. There. Yeah. Alright, so we're off to get a cake. Hang on, take the cash. Uh -huh. I, didn't, I didn't have my. Yeah, I didn't have the chance to grab my bag. So I'm gonna go and get a cake from. The lovely Mumtaz. We've been getting cakes from her for a very long time. Her name is Desserts Cakes on Instagram, yeah. I think. Is it? Yeah, that's right. And well, I she absolutely her name. love, 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 love her cakes. Like I love her. You know, I want to support her business. I think she's really talented. Her fruit cream cake is out of this world like i got it and now everybody in my family is a massive fan if you guys could taste it through the screen you would be fans too but we're not getting the fruit cream cake today because lena likes the chocolate orange mm. so we are going to get a chocolate next orange left, yeah. cake let next left yeah. i don't know where she lives hubsy normally does the cake rounds but now i'm going to learn so yeah, her chocolate orange cake is again out of this world. Like this woman, I think, can master anything. Her fruit cream cake, I think she puts it in some kind of syrup or something. It's a special ingredient. It's so moist and it's not overly sweet. It's just the right amount of sweet. So good. I just wish she did it in a dairy-free version. In fact, I'm gonna ask her to make it with some dairy-free cream at some point. It probably just won't hold as well. Why do you it's try to ask Trillish? to make tree lash with dairy free milk it's up to you but try some more you know what yes i'm gonna ask you to make some here it is Ta -da. let's have a look see <gasps> summer holiday completed there it is Ta chocolate orange oh my god it looks absolutely divine back to my playlist i've been loving the is it the noughties Two thousands playlists. I've been loving them. Is it noughties? Is that what you say? Or two thousands? Two thousands. Yeah. I've never heard of noughties before. Noughties and a special surprise as well. Did I win the board? Did you? I win. Did you win? Yeah. Show me, show me how you play. I am it. Show me honey boy. I, I just did this. Yeah. The skill, the skill, the skill. I can't get over the skill. Amazing. Oh, my love bug. Oh, hi. His first cooking. Yeah, he's going to cook like a man. Just like his dad. Cooked before. Oh. But not like proper cooking, like chicken. Chicken. Oh. And he's going to be cooking on a cooker. When I think about he's going to be measuring flavor. So what, what have you got there? You've got my, That's my coriander, my dhania. Yeah. But Ma, Dad, where have you put that then? You're gonna put it in here. Dad has got you these I know, pots. I really put it in. I put where? It in here. Right. Okay. But I, I put onions. I put pepper. Also, my liver isn't bad. Okay. Um, okay. Your match is about to be on. So you got your pepper. Garlic. Garlic. Powder. Garlic. Powder. Garlic powder. Have you measured it all out? Yeah. No. I have. A, I have. I've measured. I've measured the coriander. Yeah. I move up, Angel. I, I have get a spoon. I've measured the coriander, but not the uh, garlic bread. No oh, garlic bread. Garlic. Garlic um, powder. Garlic what powder. else do we need? We need oil. Uh, Guys, let's have dinner first. Biryani is happening today. Dad's getting Omeima's luggage ready. Sad times. 
Oh my gosh, this is just the cutest thing ever. Does she actually sit on it then? And you pull her along? Yeah. At the airport? This, I wish I had one of these when the kids were little. I put oil in this and wrap this with... Cling film, yeah, to prevent any um, leakage. This is your own cooking show, darling. I can see you've got chilli flakes there. Yeah, there You've is. got the wraps. What are you making? Oh, we're making a, a fajita. Fajita! Um, I'm probably going to take out the chilli, uh, whatever it's called, when you come back from the... What chilli? You need chilli powder? No, They're chilli flakes, no, darling. No, chilli powder, the, the pepper, so. Okay. And Does it ask for any turmeric? No. Haldi is, Haldi is great in chicken. That's all to take, tell me to take salt. Yeah, because he said salt wasn't on the list. Oh. Yeah, I don't think we need Can to. Can you sneak in a bit of Haldi? Yeah. It's really good in chicken. It's good for you. It's antibacterial. I don't know why to put it there. You just pop it in when you add all these powdery things. Miss Fine Girl, she'll be annoyed. Okay. True, actually, true. Okay, know. let's not annoy your teacher. Actually, I don't know if she'll be we'll annoyed. We start coming in with our own little mix. And true, and they are, it is fajitas, it's not like you're making Indian chicken. Exactly. Come on, come for dinner. Oh, now we're going to eat dinner. Up the gates. Happy Lester Day to you. Happy Lester Day, dear Lena. Good morning guys, it is Thursday the 16th of September and I am not very well so it seems the cold symptoms developed. I mean it's not full on, I'm not super super sick, my head's definitely a bit foggy, my ear feels a little bit blocked and my throat's a little bit ticklish. So as a preemptive measure, because I don't want to get the flu, I'm just going to cancel everything that I had planned today and just take a day of R&R. &R. So I'm not going to be vlogging the day because literally what I have in store is sofa time, Netflix and my laptop. I do have a work call at six today, pretty late one, but it's an important one. And then I've got some plans, some travel plans to sort out. That can all be done on the laptop from my sofa. I'm not planning on cooking. Um, I've spoken with Hubsy and he's like, he'll be fine to sort all of that out and um, I did plan my lunch plan. I did cancel my lunch plans also. I wanted to host like a nice girls lunch out so I had asked my sisters-in-law, my mother-in-law, my mother and my sister-in-law's mum who's visiting. I'd asked everyone, like all the ladies, whether they were free and most of them were except for my mum. Mum can't come because she's gone to the airport to, wait, let's rest. Let's lean, I'm in a, I am feeling quite tired actually even though I just woke up and it's like, no, actually I did wake up at like half nine, but I've been in bed for like an hour, so. But I just rolled out, my tea's waiting for me. Um, but what was I saying? Yeah, so mum is not here because she's gone to the airport. Amayma left early this morning. It was, I didn't vlog last night because it was pretty emotional, like all my sisters were here because Amayma was leaving early morning. They did their goodbyes last night. After that, I just, I wasn't in the mood to vlog. And then early this morning, Mama stayed over here, so I was here in the morning. I got up, the kids got up, and we all did our goodbyes, and um, it's it's sinking in very, very, very slowly. I think because I'm not feeling very well, my head does feel quite congested. It hasn't fully sunk in, but it was really sad. I feel really, really, really sad. And it's just gonna be really weird, because she's been here for two months, and we were all agreeing that this trip just felt so different. It felt really magical. It felt like we bonded on a different level. And so now that she's gone, I'm making plans to go there ASAP. <laughs> no, but seriously, I was actually supposed to visit there last year. I, so I canceled three trips last year. And then early this year, I was able to take one trip because it was a business trip. So, I feel like there's all these trips that I need to catch up on. Even though it was a specific reason that I was going to visit Saudi last year and that plan has now changed, I do still want to go back there and it looks like I may have an opportunity there that is definitely going to be worth exploring. So watch this space, I might be going to Saudi at some point. Um, maybe like end of this year or next year or something. I don't know, who knows what's gonna happen, just depends on 
what the border situation is like and what the situation is like here in the UK. Speaking of which, I'm gonna go and do a lateral flow test as well, just to make sure I'm in the clear. Yeah, drink your vitamin C powder, folks, and get lots of rest and sleep. That's when we recover, so give your body that. That's what your body's trying to tell you. It's what mine is anyway, so. Mwah. Goodbye. <laughs>